SQL injection, like other forms of injection, is a problem that occurs because data and code are commingled and interpreted by other software, in this case, a database server. If user-supplied data is unsafely used as any part of a SQL query, this provides an attacker with the ability to manipulate the intended SQL statement. If the attacker has the ability to run SQL syntax or code on the SQL server, this can be a very dangerous situation. How does this confusion occur? There is more than one way, but let's start with the most basic example. SQL injection starts with string concatenation or interpolation. The concept is fairly simple. Imagine you have a string which represents a SQL query. Then you interpolate or concatenate user input into that string. Next, send the string query to the SQL server to be interpreted and executed. This means user-supplied data is directly within the SQL query, giving an attacker the ability to add raw SQL to that string, which is then sent to the server and executed. This is why parameterized or prepared statements are preferred over string concatenation or interpolation. The query is first sent to the server with question marks in place of the actual user supplied data. To the server this means, here is the only query I want you to run and nothing else. Wait a moment and I'll send you the data that you'll need for this query. There is no confusion in this scenario. The server knows what query to run and then executes it once it has received the data. Alternatively, with string concatenation or interpolation, the query can be modified before being sent to the server and can be shaped to fit the attacker's needs or goals prior to the interpretation and execution. Let's demonstrate this concept using a vulnerability from Django.nv. Inside of the project details view on line 504 of the views.py file within Django.nv, we have a SQL query where user input, which is supposed to be the project ID value, is interpolated into the SQL query string rather than having been parameterized. In this case, an additional parameter is added to the returned object that calculates the current completion state of a project based on the inputted SQL statement. However, user input is unsafely placed into the SQL query string, allowing the attacker to modify the SQL statement. So now let's go ahead and manipulate the query string to see the vulnerability in action. This is easily done by browsing to the project details page by clicking on any one project from the django.nv dashboard. We'll place a space and a single quote after the project ID within the URL and inspect the response. You can see that the response has a 500 operational syntax error indicating we caused some mischief on the server, but the error shows that our input has actually been placed directly into the SQL query and we can now manipulate the query as desired. Positive identification of basic SQL injection vulnerabilities involves the entry of SQL control characters into form fields, URL bars, and even HTTP header values. The simplest instances of SQL injection can be identified because of the error messages like the one from Django.nv that are delivered to the user by the application. Identification of SQL injection vulnerabilities within source code requires an understanding of how an application interacts with the database. Analysis can be time-consuming depending on the project, so use of an IDE's search capability can be helpful. For a Django application, start from the database interaction layer documented in models.py and work back through the code to see where user input is used in various SQL queries. Since we exploited the project SQL interaction within the running Django.nv application, let's find the project object in models.py that corresponds with the vulnerability. A review of this object definition shows that no raw SQL queries are defined within models.py that would be vulnerable to injection. Let's move to views.py, which is the next possible Django layer that may interact with the database through API calls. Notice that the project object is loaded from the models definitions on line 34. As we search through all of the Django views for calls to the project object, watch for raw SQL definitions that could be an issue. Calls to objects.get, .filter, or .orderby are all safe from SQL injection and use parameterized queries by default. Once we get to line 504, you should notice a new call to objects.extra, which can be used to write raw SQL queries. As we investigate the entire user input flow, you can see that the project ID parameter sent into the project detail view is used to create a SQL query that returns the percentage of completed tasks associated with a project through the use of string concatenation. We know from our dynamic test that this statement does result in a SQL injection vulnerability, 
and must be fixed if we want to prevent exploitation of the flaw. We could have done a direct search for the dangerous functions associated with writing raw SQL queries, but sometimes developers find inventive ways to bypass the extra or execute APIs to talk directly with the database. Django documentation defines the dangerous functions used in writing raw SQL queries that can give you a shortcut to identifying any possible vulnerabilities in your own application. These include the use of a defined object's raw manager method, the cursor.execute method, besides the above discussed objects.extra and raw SQL class, even though the last two are not recommended for current Django use. Overall, identification of SQL injection flaws with source code may be a time-consuming process, but source code reviews are the only way to guarantee that no such vulnerabilities exist within your application. Now it's time to navigate back to the code and fix the offending vulnerable SQL query. Use of the extra function is OK as long as we leverage a parameterized query that can separate the user-supplied data from the actual SQL commands. The current SQL extra function uses format strings and concatenation with the percent %s signs to build the query, which results in the injection vulnerability. Review of the Django documentation shows that we can use the extra function in a safe manner through the use of the select underbar params variable to pass in the untrusted input. Even though use of the extra function is discouraged, we can still use it safely for now while developing a more extensive fix for future Django upgrades. Now let's change the Django NV extra call to use parameterized queries by modifying the manner in which the project ID parameter is sent to the function. A small change in the manner the function is called will signify to the SQL interpreter that the data needed to complete the query are separate from the SQL instructions built into the query. The only real structural changes needed is the use of select params in place of the format string concatenation to accommodate the parameterized query. This only requires passing in the project ID user input in a slightly different manner. The other changes are just structural so that Python knows how to interpret our code. Once we have the statement fixed up, let's test our fix through the running Django.nv application. If you remember, the vulnerability was accessed by clicking the project details link on the dashboard. If our SQL injection fix is working, we should no longer see a Python stack trace when we add our attack payload of a space and a single quote after the project ID number contained in the URL. The preventions for SQL injection are similar if an application uses the raw, execute, or raw SQL functions. To summarize the mitigation of SQL injection in Django applications, we perform at least four steps. We will use the vulnerable call to extra to demonstrate these steps once again. Step one, identify all instances of string concatenation in SQL queries by reviewing database object calls for raw SQL statements. Step two, check the Django documentation for safe variables and parameters associated with the identified dangerous functions. Step three, convert the raw query from string concatenation to the use of params or select params variables as appropriate. Last and final step, test your fix within a running environment to validate that the vulnerability has been mitigated.